Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is your boy T Magic with those fantasy pools. Back once again with another Play Now Online tip video. Today we're going with Tier 1, the Philadelphia 76ers, and we're actually taking on the all time heat. Now, before this game started, I didn't even know that it was an all time heat. I thought it was a classic team. I don't even have the all time heat unlocked yet, I don't believe. So, we'll see how this goes. It's going to be a little bit different because this is one of your classic take advantage of the game video game basketball players that I'm going up against here so we'll be talking a lot about how to kind of defend some of the cheesier tactics this guy uses a lot of this video actually this is actually a, a mismatch that I had but instead of attacking it with Embiid I attacked it with Simmons that's actually a bad offense on my end I should have went to uh, Embiid being guarded by Dragic there, but I was worried about him double teaming because that's what he did on that first play. Is immediately double teaming, and I was trying to fill him out to see what he would do. These second shot opportunities is something that you're just gonna have to deal with um, when playing the all-time Heat. Got Shaq down there on wide side at power forward, and that's actually how a lot of the all-time teams are constructed. They have centers playing the power forward spot, so you just gotta be ready for that. Here we got the little floppy action running for JJ Redick. He overplays it, trying to get the steal, and we get an open three. Um, and that's why I always say when you have a sharpshooter of the caliber of J.J. Reddick, you want to try to run some offense through him to see if you get some easy open looks from deep. And you see I'm going to go back to it here. He brings a double team, and it throws it off. And when you get that double team, just hold circle down. It'll bring somebody to the ball, and you'll usually be able to make a pretty safe pass from it. But here we're just playing it safe, even though he broke up my play, trying to double team, and we still get ready to go for the three because he's running around trying to get steals with Dwayne Wade. And here you see what he's trying to do. He's trying to get in the open floor with Wade, and he's pretty successful at doing so. But again, we push the ball down the floor. You don't want to be playing too fast when you're playing a team with that much more talent than you do. But you want to take what the defense gives you. And there, Wade was late getting back and left Reddick open for the, the open jump shot. And you see every play with this team is attacking the rim. They don't have any shooters. So you, knowing that, I'm going to adjust my defense. And I'm going to show you that in a clip here. I'm actually going to leave the clip in showing me and making my adjustments. Again, good ball movement. Just being patient. Um, you don't want to get in a track meet with them, and this is the reason why you don't have the talent to keep up with them. In the open court, LeBron, Wade are too fast, and he's leaking out pretty much every single time we take a shot. He's not even trying to contend sometimes. Most times he's just taking Wade or LeBron and running down the court. So you see I'm going to go into the menu here, and I'm going to try to make some adjustments to try to take that away. Um, the game does a pretty good job of giving you options on how to defend and you want to use them when you can so on the rebounds I don't want my guys crashing in for boards I want them to get back because that's the most important thing and we're not going to be able to get those offensive rebounds because again they have Shaq in center they have white side at power forward Alonzo Morning comes in at power forward we're not going to get those rebounding opportunities so there's no point in having that and you see what he's trying to do on offense is trying to sprint back and that last adjustment there, I put Shaq, uh, the defense on Shaq, as leave him. And the reason you want to do that is because when you set that to leave a defender and win off ball, whoever's defending him will help. It's quicker to help and, and better position to help on any drives at the rim. Again, he overplays trying to get a steal, and we get an open shot from Shamit. Shamit's a good shooter. Um, the 76ers roster is constructed to get the ball to shooters and space the floor for Embiid and Simmons. And that's what you want to be doing 99% of the time. You want to play through Simmons, you want to play through Embiid, and then look to get open shots with the rest of the players that are out there. Again, another second shot opportunity for him. That's just something I have to deal with. Right there, I made a pass into traffic, and James was able to get his hand on it. <laughs> Look at that. See, you got to be smart with the ball. <laughs> you have to be smart with the ball. Uh, or things like that will happen. Right there on that play, I had Whiteside on him. And again, I'm always trying to look for the 
path of least resistance. Right there, Simmons is being guarded by Whiteside, and that's an easy one-on-one -on -one opportunity that you want to attack. You see here we got back and we're able to make a defensive play with Simmons. When playing transition defense, you have to be extremely active. The computer's AI or logic within the game is not still lacking as it's been like the last few years in transition defensive opportunities. So you have to be active and looking to make plays yourself. See right there, I switched back to Simmons and took away that opportunity from uh, LeBron there. Such a wide Again, we went right back to the well there, attacking Whiteside, who's defending Simmons. He, that forced him to bring Shaq over to help on the drive, and that left Sarge wide open. And Sarge can knock down that shot. You don't really want to be taking too many long twos with him, but if he's open, he can knock him down. Again, just taking that transition opportunities where I see them. You don't want to be getting too much of a track meet. Take your shots with the the most efficient players on the floor. Reddick was that guy on that play, and that's why I felt comfortable doing that. As we see what he's been doing this entire game, which is grabbing the rebound with Shaq and then sending it full court to Wade or LeBron streaking down the court. On this end, we're going to attack Whiteside with Simmons, and we're just going to keep doing it until he makes an adjustment. That's two or three times in a row now where we've gotten a good shot or a good look from doing that. So we're going to continue to take advantage of that as much as we can. Now we're just going to go timeout here and utilize your timeouts. I can't stress that enough. Utilize your timeouts to kind of stop the bleeding a little bit. You see we're down three still and he's being uh, pretty efficient in scoring on that end of the floor. So we're going to go in and try to make some adjustments to slow down his momentum. Um, I didn't talk about it last time, but I put my defense to strength the floor. And what that's going to do is force him to be more of a shooter, hopefully. And you have to know the person on the other side of the floor to do that. On the Heat, they don't have much in the way of shooting. And this entire game, he hasn't looked to take any uh, three-point opportunities. So... I'm going to shrink the floor and make it hard for him to get inside it, which is what he's been trying to do this entire game. And then there, I also took away the baseline. He's been going baseline to get a lot of his opportunities and shooting the ball. So I'm going to take that away from him. And for some reason, I was already trying to manually do that, but it doesn't seem that effective. And it seems much more effective when you actually put that in the setting. And you see here, with Redick, I was able to cut him off going baseline. And then, boom, you get the block from Embiid, whose setting on Shaq was to leave him. And you see what that led to. That was a perfect explanation and a perfect example of how our defensive settings played a big role in making that play happen, leading to the open three. Again, he can't go baseline. He's forced to go middle. Embiid is there to help. He made it that time, but remember, just that last play, it was a block, and we were able to get up the floor for open uh, score. Get he's over playing. He missed the shot there, and he, he's out and streaking. But I'm back. See, we have everything set on limit transition. There's two players back to defend that play, and I switched over to one of them to make that a tougher opportunity than the computer would have. So our settings are making a big difference already and improving our defense. Reddick is in the corner. being patient, not taking our first shot that we get, moving the ball around, and looking for the open man. We get an easy layup with JJ Reddick just from being patient and not forcing up any shots. Sarge inside with Lonzo Morning right there is not a good shot. So you move it out, keep moving the ball around, and eventually the defense will open up and you'll be able to take a really good opportunity for yourself. And you're going to see another great example how being patient can really help your offense. See, there I could have forced up that shot with Fultz, but instead I'm going to drive and dump it off to Embiid, who's being guarded by Drogic. And that's what you want. Easiest shots for your team every play down the court. This entire game, Embiid's been guarded by Shaq, and I haven't been going to him in the post, but out on the perimeter, that takes away Shaq's strength. And he was playing back on him, probably because he can't really keep up with Embiid if he were to drive it, and that freed up an easy elbow jump. And Wade's going to score right here again, but that was good defense. We took away the baseline, which is what he's been using to score every time down the floor and force him to do something different. And that's what you want to be doing defensively, forcing somebody into doing something they're uncomfortable with. Back on offense, 
another shining example of just being patient and not forcing up bad shots. Back to McConnell. They're playing good, solid defense all around. And finally a breakdown at the very end of the shot clock. But that wouldn't have been there if I would have forced up a shot early on. So you're always looking to be patient. And I'm calling timeout. I don't want him getting any type of momentum heading into the fourth quarter. I want to make adjustments to what just happened on that play. Utilize your timeouts whenever you can. Don't go the whole game and not use your timeouts. That's a waste. And it leads to long runs for the other team. There, he hit a three or rise, and that was because if you think back, we have our defense set on shrink the floor. Now, I'm not going to change that because I still want them defending, driving, and inside opportunities for his team, but I'm going to go into the individual matchup and make the adjustments on the shooter, which is smother and tight, because I'm not worried about Glenn Rice driving by me. He's not that effective in doing that. His strength is in his jump shot, and so that's what you want to play him for. Right here, he has a transition opportunity with Wade, but you see there's two defenders back on him. So he gets the foul, but that was good defense. It didn't lead to a dunk. It didn't lead to a layup. He got a foul, and he missed the free throw. So that's good defense, and you'll live with that. And that comes from your settings. Oh, good move by MB. Taken wide side there. You know he's talking crap in his ear, talking about you can't guard me. TJ McConnell is a really solid defender out on the perimeter, but he's just not strong enough to be defending LeBron as you see right there. On this end of the floor, Embiid is still being guarded by Whiteside, even with Shaq in the game. So I'm going to call some plays for him. Now, even though the play was called for Embiid, you see that first action was for J.J. Redick from downtown. I wasn't there, so I continued to run the play. And be patient. A little up fake gets both of them in the air, and we're able to get an easy dunk with Embiid. And that's why I emphasize being patient on offense because it usually leads to pretty good looks if you know where to attack. I was careless right there, and that's why you always want to protect the ball with L2. Hold L2 down or left trigger if you're on Xbox, and protect the ball when you're setting up your offense or you're waiting for guys to get into position. I'm going to get the ball inside the Embiid and just be patient. Look for an opportunity. And we find folks for the easy layup. Just being patient and looking to see where the defense is coming and trying to attack from. I like this play here. And you see we got the open look. Embiid is not a knockdown three-point shooter, but from the top he's pretty decent. And if you're going to be shooting threes with Embiid, that's probably the best spot to be shooting him from. And that's where he likes to knock them down. As you see, we missed the last one, but we knocked this one down. And we're going to play through them the rest of this game. Because that's two times in a row now. We ran a little fist action, which is a pick and roll. And he should have been doing that the entire game. Sarge out there being or trying to defend Alonzo Mourning is not a good matchup. But I'm waiting for him right here to see what he's going to do. Maybe bring a double team. Try to take a bad steal attempt. And nothing was happening, so I ran another fist play, and we get the foul. That's twice in a row. That's about two or three times in a row now where we ran that same action, pick and roll, through the play call because the play call leaves much more spacing, much better spacing for your team. Again, Simmons running the fist, and we're able to get an easy dunk with him. That's about four plays in a row now, and I'm going to keep going back to the well because he hasn't been able to defend it yet. We almost get the steal there, and Covington is an elite defender. Just let him play defense on his own. Let him do his thing. He was first team all defense last year, and that's what you want. Have him out there forcing up tough shots. And we do, and we get the rebound because my defensive settings are to rebound for everybody. Simmons makes a good pass, not forcing up the shot. Able to get Fultz wide open for three. That's what happens when you're patient. There I could have rushed it and forced up that shot with Covington, which would have likely been a miss or a block. But because we were patient, we were rewarded with three. Fultz. 
He goes for the steal, which leads to help having to come over to defend him at the rim. And now we get Covington taking the shot that he can knock down, and that's that three-point ball. And on this end, he's locking LeBron down. The man is on fire right now. And finally, <laughs> that pass goes out of bounds. And I don't ever understand why people quit when there's only like 20 seconds left to play. Just finish the game, man. Maybe one of y'all can explain to me because I don't get it. But anyways, if you enjoyed the content or found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're going to try to get around to doing all 30 NBA teams. And I think we're up to about six or seven so far. So if you haven't seen those, please go check those out. This has been your boy Team Magic with those fantasy pools. Y'all appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you for the support. And we're out.